Welcome back, everyone, to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan here. Now, for today, I mean, what can I say? You know, I'm already having an incredible, super badass evening. She's back. The incredible, amazing, the badass, the superstar, the one and only, the legendary. Yeah. <laughs> Snejana, how are you today? Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> nice to be back. Thank you for having me back. Absolutely. I mean, what better way to have a kick-ass, kick-ass evening? Yeah, I agree. Let's go. It's summer evening. Now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow, but also um, on the description below, you're going to find all of yeah, yeah, social media. Follow her and discover why she's super badass. Now, without further more, let's jump in here. So, I want to start this whole conversation by throwing out the first question, which is, what's new since our last chat? Yeah, so... When did we chat last? Was it like 2022? Yeah, it was around 2022. I think. Wait, we did. Th- we did. Th- well, the first time we spoke was also on Zoom, right? It wasn't on Instagram. Uh, yes. It w- yes. It was, it was on, on Zoom, t- right? Yeah. So I think like around a year and a half, year and something. Yeah, like two years probably around that line. So. Yeah. Not sure when exactly that was, but. Uh... If it was like before or after I shot my first uh, TV show, um, the TV show is called The Power. Go go on Amazon Prime, watch it for yourself. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a pretty cool TV show. It's about um, women developing superpowers, and uh, the superpower is it, it's it's basically. It's an organ that, um, my apologies. It's an organ that um, women develop in their collarbone, and it 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 helps them to develop electricity in their body. So when they feel uh, threatened or scared, or you know, sexually abused, or uh, you know feel like they need to protect themselves they can electrocute people um yeah so that was pretty cool and <laughs> uh i got to actually electrocute someone on set not literally obviously they put like special effects on me and it looks very cool in in the scene that i did um yeah, so I was in episode five if anyone <laughs> was interested you can go watch it um yeah, it was it was, you know, the best time of my life. I think um, just being on set, being around creative people, um, that was great. And then I did a theater play, uh, my first theater play. That was a kind of like a spin-off, um, like Sherlock Holmes <laughs> spin-off. Uh, it was a Christmas show though, so I was. Um, I actually played a murder in that uh, theater show, so that was a really fun thing to do, and uh, just uh, you know, a fun role to play around with. Yeah, but then after, as we all know, the strike happened, and it kind of uh, creeped in on everyone, and um, <laughs> acting life shut down, sort of, you know. <laughs> And and tell me like how like how tough was it for you, knowing that basically there were no roles or yeah like no auditions like everything was was very scarce like not so much opportunities like how was that for you? Yeah, so well, it was quite interesting because at the beginning of twenty twenty three. I was getting quite a lot of auditions and a lot of them were from American casting directors and I was like, oh my God, like it's finally, you know, it finally starts, you know, picking up and um, <laughs> and then like a month later, it just like everything shut down. So, you know, I was very hopeful because, you know, how they say like after your first show, you, you know, tend to audition more and book more it's kind of like you need that first um uh starting point 
but yeah, everything shut down. So I, I mean, it was very difficult emotionally and just, you know, feeling like, you know, it's the strike and the COVID happened just two years ago. So everyone was hoping that the industry would be booming, you know, a year or two after COVID, but then the strike happened. So it was, <laughs> it was kind of like shocking, but what, what's, what was more shocking is that it lasted so long, you know, they couldn't come to agreement. They just, yeah, it, first it was the writer's strike, strike and then the actors joined and yeah, it, it was very difficult, and it still is. Uh, you know, the residue of the strike is still in the air. There hasn't been a lot of work um, because about 90% of uh, shows in Vancouver are American. And, you know, although everyone thought, oh, you know, it's going to just pick up so fast, but not really because, you know, the writers haven't been writing anything. Like, the shows shut down, the, you know, no one was working. So, of course, it is going to take time, maybe a year or even more. Mm, last year, I kind of, I kind of, I took an opportunity to just work on my acting skills more. I took the time to, you know, take classes I wanted to take for a really long time. I went. I went to Los Angeles. I took classes with uh, Ivana Chabak in her studio. She has really good, good teachers there, and the actors there were just, you know, so inspiring. And they were not giving up and just working on their crafts and their skills. So that was very motivating. In a lot of ways, I've. You know, I've always wanted to take classes with her. And the second I got visa, I booked my tickets. <laughs> I was like, I'm going. So I went uh, in at the end of May and I was there for five weeks. Uh, I met some really good people, writers, directors. And uh, now I'm working on, on one of the projects with them. And hopefully, you know, it's going to be... Um, hopefully they're gonna shoot in in October if everything goes smoothly. But yeah, so um, my experience in Los Angeles was great. I know a lot of people have uh, <laughs> you know, different opinions on Los Angeles, but I I honestly I went there with no expectations and I had the best time. It was my first time in Los Angeles, and. I met really good actors that gave me some really good advice. Um, yeah, so yeah, to answer your question, it was very stressful and I'm still stressed. I just had a talk with my agent about, you know, what is going on? Why is there no auditions? But I think everyone goes through it right now. And like, if you're thinking, oh, everyone else is getting auditions, but I, I, I'm not getting, like, what is happening. Everyone else is also not getting much, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe some people get more than others, but the industry is is truly really slow. So I think for me it's just, like, time to, you know, focus on on the inner parts of of what what kind of composes like the, the components focus on the components of acting rather than um on external things that are like i have no control of like auditions and uh, you know getting in the room or getting callbacks or getting the roles like i have no control over that <laughs> But uh, I have control over my skills, developing new, you know, developing new skills, taking classes, 
just motivating myself and all sorts of ways. <laughs> yeah. That's badass. Let me just tell you. <laughs> That's cool. And, but tell me, like, how you managed, like, during that time, how you were able to motivate yourself? I mean, I'm pretty sure that at that point, at some point, you were asking yourself, should I quit? You know what I mean? So when that happened, how you managed to keep up going or to be like, you know what? And, you know, like how you like how you stay positive when that happened, the whole you know, strike. Yeah, honestly, like, I don't think I've ever had a thought, oh, I should quit. I think <clears throat> um, I know that I'm in this game for a long run because <laughs> Like, I think just acting, I have patience for acting like anything else, <laughs> you know, like, I I just know that it takes time, it takes perseverance, and uh, I'm just ready to stay in this game for as long as it, as long as it takes, because I love it, so I never had a thought, or oh, maybe I should quit, you know, um, I love the artistic process of it i love the art of it um yeah but staying motivated is obviously important because sometimes i would even like go to classes and you know and just like some days classes would mo motivate me make me feel like i'm still staying you know artistically present and like just creating and loving the art of it but sometimes i'd be like you know it's almost like it's almost like you can't put it into use you know so that that can be very um discouraging i think but i believe when 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 that happens, it's very important to surround yourself with uh, people that support you, you know, that, and that, that, you know, ignite that spark in you, people that, um, you know, give you, uh, give you love and, uh, you know, appreciate the your art um you know they say like if you if your partner doesn't you know support your endeavors just kind of like <laughs> probably not not the best partner but also you shouldn't be surrounding your people yourself with people like that so um yeah my my teacher just mentioned that in in my one of my classes and i'm like yeah you know the the acting industry is already hard enough. We don't need people that discourage us or don't believe in us. So um, especially in the times like that, right? When you start doubting yourself and because you're not getting in the room or not getting auditions. I think it's also important to take the right classes with the right teachers as well. Um, Unfortunately, you know, I, I hear kind of like horror stories about teachers that almost like bully their actors and uh, I like I've never had a teacher like that in my life, but I, I honestly can't imagine, you know, someone telling you that you're doing wrong, that your acting sucks and things like that. Like it's just kind of unacceptable. So you also have to look out for good classes, good teachers in times like this and you know when the industry is basically <laughs> shut down. Um, yeah, also doing some meditations and breath work is important to just you know stay in peace with yourself and stay grounded and helps with stress a lot and anxiety so yeah and 
and, and like now that you're mentioning like how you like how you manage you know like the whole yeah like the whole negative side of it i mean like the people who are discouraging like people people who you know like every now and then like haters you know like thing like that like how you manage to you know just keep moving forward because i mean at the end nobody likes being rejected and so things like that so how you like how you usually treat that side of it you know when you have when you have like bad comments or things like that basically Oh, you know, it is difficult, <laughs> especially because um, I think just like in general in society, you're not supposed to say, you know, bad things to other people, like, or it's almost like, or be mean to people, like, you know, I personally sometimes shut down like if if something like that happens I'm like wow how how I'm just thinking like you know how this person can be so rude well luckily that hasn't happened a lot but um I think it's just like just be daring you know like stand up for yourself uh stand up for your art stand up for your hard work um a lot of people don't understand how difficult acting is they think it's just you know like like it's you know it's nothing like anyone can do it but really it's not because it involves you know a big emotional um just like it, like acting is very emotional and it always you know triggers something in you you're like it triggers your emotional world like it 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 takes a lot of practice a lot of work just to be open emotionally and you know physically as well like your body has to be constantly like receiving and giving and it just like takes a lot of a lot of energy out of someone so not not a lot of people understand that especially like if you're an international actor it takes like probably a hundred times more work than For someone who was born with a perfect American accent, you know, who was born like Canadian or American, like who, you know, it for those people, it's kind of like a given and a lot of people take it for granted or a lot of people don't know the fact that you have to, including me, I also didn't know when I first started acting, I was like, oh, I didn't know I have to have a perfect American accent. Oh, I didn't know I have to be like a citizen actually to have all these or like to be able to get into union or to be able to get which and, you know, then it gives you more work if you're union because a lot of projects are union right now. Uh, so when I first started, I didn't know that. So like as an international actor... You have to, you know, work so much harder than anyone else. Um, also, because you come from a different country. It's like in Russia, we explain, for example, right? We explain, or sorry, not explain, express emotions differently. You know, there's a language barrier. There's an mm -hmm. accent. There's like... so many things like cultural differences uh, I, you know like the acting yes most of the acting in Hollywood is like Stanislavski based like the foundation of acting is Stanislavski right well some people would argue with that but that's where it all started um, so like Russia right Stanislavski but um But still, like, the things we do there is different from the things we do in Canada or America. And 
yeah, so it is different. It is difficult. Like in the way people communicate with you, it is just a lot of a lot of things are different. Yeah. But isn't that exciting at the same time? You know, the fact that on this case, I mean, you were able to, yeah, that you were able to pursue your dream on it in a total different country, different language, different culture, total different, I mean, total 100% change here. I mean, isn't that exciting at the same time? Like when you think about it, like all of the things that you have accomplished to it and you were able to it, you know, I mean, that's that's pretty badass, by the way. Yes, definitely. Like when I, when I look back, um, it is that I feel like that's what, you know, what motivates me and keeps me curious as to like, oh, what's next to come, you know, like what else can I accomplish? And um, yeah, but sometimes, you know, I, I forget about the things that I did. <laughs> it's inevitable i mean it happens to all of us i mean yeah. we're human and we sometimes tend to not i mean it's easier said than done i mean right we all we yeah. all we all have that let's say yeah yeah like you just have to appreciate your um achievements more i guess yeah like what do you think the 10 year old version of yourself would would think about you right now or would say to you right now oh it's a good question um well I think she would be hmm, very proud of me. I think she would be maybe a little bit shocked. She would be she would be excited about the fact that I'm in the city where um Smallville was filmed. <laughs> Cuz when I was a, when I was 10 or was I 10 and like yeah I was watching this TV show about the Superman, right? Like the mm -hmm, Smallville. Yep. Yeah, Smallville, mm -hmm. and and I was I had like this cra <laughs> crush on Tom Wellington, <laughs> and then at that time when I I think they were because they were filming here probably, I googled him and it said that he was like in British Columbia. And at that time, I was like, "Wow, well, I'm never gonna go there," and now I'm here, so. It would, yeah, I think the 10 year old would be like ah, screaming. <laughs> yeah. Super excited. Yeah, let's thank Tom Wellington for that. Yeah. I, I, I manifested. She would say, wow, we really manifested something. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool, right? I mean, as, 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 as I was saying, like the fact that when you're able to realize that, when, yeah, when you're able to realize all the work you have, you have put through, to where you are right now i mean sure it's not like where you want to be forever but hey it's a good start and at the same time it's your it's 100 percent your achievement which i mean that takes guts you know for for someone to to go to another country and to start over and to leave that even yeah like to leave that part of your life behind start a new one from scratch basically mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah yeah totally uh you know I, it it was hard because when i first came to canada i can i couldn't speak any any english so i think for the first three weeks i was just silent <laughs> well I'll, i couldn't understand the teachers either so i was just like listening yeah and how were you able i mean when you when you went to so you went to canada no english at all like at around what time you were able to try to start speaking it? After a year, yeah. Well, like I think like throughout the year. So, um, well, you know, because I couldn't speak English, I didn't have my many friends. So then I had all this time to study, <laughs> right? So I was like just sitting in my room and like obviously like hanging out with some international students who also spoke broken English, but um yeah, it's just like a lot of a lot of studying, a lot of perseverance. Um yeah, and uh it is it's funny because my first English assignment, I totally 
like plagiarized a lot of things. And my teacher is like, I'm going to give you another chance. You, you have to redo it and do it to like the best of your ability, but don't plagiarize anything. So I was like, okay, thank God. Thank you. Because, you know, he, he didn't give me a zero. <laughs> and then I had this goal. I was like, because he told me he never gives 100% to anyone in his class. And so, and I was like, okay, well, you're going to give it to me. Just watch it. By the end of the year, I'm going to have 100%. And it was my English teacher. So, or like by the end of the year, you're going to give me at least 100% once, you know, on one of my assi assignments. And he was like, okay, well, it's a good goal, right? And then we had a Shakespeare week. You know, Shakespeare. Like, I don't know English. Or I didn't know. You know, that was like in the middle. It was kind of like in the middle of the year or something. And he had he would place students around the school to read these monologues, you know, like complicated Shakespearean monologues. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I want to do it too. And he was like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, I want to do it. In fact, I want to do it on the, like during the morning assembly because we would have like a morning assembly every day. And he was like, okay. So I did it. And that was my first acting performance ever. Like I didn't act, um, before <laughs> and he gave me a hundred percent so yeah <laughs> and then after, yeah and then after that when i told him i'm going to a business school in vancouver he was like oh you're gonna regret it i was like why i was like i really wanted to get into the school is like you know solder school one of the best schools in canada and he's like, I just, I think you're just too artistic for it. And here I am, like, he just knew it, I think, <laughs> you know. Here I am, acting away. <laughs> and, you were, and you were pursuing your dreams. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's, that's how, that's why I knew you were badass since day one when we first spoke. I was like, there's something about her that she's super badass. Let me find out why. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That is incredible. I mean, at the end, as I was saying, I mean, the fact that you that you were able to make that happen, you know, and that you're actually making some steps to it, you know, that is pretty cool. You know, since I mean, a couple of minutes ago when you were mentioning about the whole accents, I mean, there are some actors that I have interviewed that English, of course, is not their native, you know, their native tongue, so they tend to get like a lot of uh, barriers, let's say, due to their accent. Which, to be honest, I think it's stupid because, yeah, you know. It's like, it's like you know, it's it uh, at least to me it doesn't make any sense because, you know, they are they are talented enough to. I mean, if they are talented enough, I mean, if they have the skills to perform at the mm -hmm. level, do you want give them a chance? You know, otherwise, you know, what's the point of it? You know, I mean, if you were if you were, yeah, I mean, that's just nonsense of of how some people will go that way. You know, because. It's. I mean, I, I don't. I don't. I don't understand why. It's like, for example, and it still happens. It's incredible that even till this day, I mean, not yeah, like even till this day, some productions, some big productions, when they when they shot a scene in Mexico, for example, they would put people who don't speak Spanish at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, why? You know, you can use local local talent, put them on it. And it will increase the whole environment to it, and it will make it like more immersive to the to the audience itself, because you're actually hearing a a local to it, you know, or like yeah. you, you, you know what I mean. And at the same time, I mean, if give the opportunity, I would, I mean, I would love if they would give the opportunity to everyone, basically, you know, if you if you if you can do it, go for it, you know, regardless if you can speak hundred percent or not, you know, because I do think sometimes it is interesting to find to discover the actors, to discover people who. They are acting, they are pursuing their dreams, and they are giving an incredible performance. And it's nonsense that because their accent, because they don't speak 100%, they don't give him a chance to it. At least to me, it's, yeah, it's nonsense. So, yes, uh, I totally agree. It's, um, uh, you know, one of my teachers, and I don't know, maybe it's controversial to say, but she said it's also. You know, the fact that they only want American accent is kind of a, 
it's kind of like racism in accents <laughs> you know if if that if that makes any sense i don't know it's you know they they do want i mean they do want to see more diversity nowadays which is great and but but they want to see the diversity on the on the outside but they still want american standard american accent you know you but you have to look you know diverse so but to me it's kind of um i don't know it's i, I don't understand like you know because so much culture comes with the with an accent and just like so much personality and just everything you know comes with languages so yeah 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 it's like it's like it like the whole message to it and i'm and i also sometimes make fun of it is so they want they want more diversity but at the same time they don't so yeah. what so what they what what it looks or 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 at least to me is that when they want to apply that diversity it looks super forced you know it yeah. looks like like let's let like let's just put this so people cannot complain here we go period problem solved and when you do that you ended up you ended up ruining the whole thing over you know i mean there's plenty of shows that i'm not going to mention of course but there's plenty of shows that they have applied that that they have go to that through that uh, a specific line and they just put diversity because let's put diversity to it and they ended up messing up the show or the movie or you don't want to see it because you know because it it looks way too forced it doesn't make any sense to it i mean if you're going to if you're going to if if you're going to put some diversity in your story make sure that they actually make sense like that is one of the things that i sometimes discover that that sometimes some projects will be just lazy to it because they they just want to avoid uh the whole rejection of the public that they will do everything to it but they do it in a wrong way and they end up being worse because people who might be interested they're not interested anymore because you know you ruined it you ruined it so at least if you're gonna if you're gonna go that way go that way and problem solve you know because we will see it i mean it's super hard but like whenever we see in a movie that there are some actors between accents you know something about it it gets your i mean or at least to me it gets my attention like like well like what this is about you know what i mean like is is like do they have an accent because they're gonna do there's something on there's something on on it on the story you know is they're gonna plus give it plus it 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 gives it like more reality to it you know like more empathy like more you feel like more related to it, you know, instead of yeah. like, for example, it's so interesting. <laughs> I don't know if, if it happened to you, but we will see I've been back when I was a kid and they were playing these historical movies, right? From World War II, from the Roman Empire, things like that. And everybody was speaking English like they came out of Cambridge. You know what I mean? And I would be like, come on, you know, if, you, if you're going to play somebody from, I don't know, Eastern Europe or Germany or from those places, try to make it as more real as possible and not to make everyone speaking like super fluently and super properly because that's not the way it is. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's almost like we're showing a f like fake uh, reality or I don't know. I just, uh, yes, I agree. We, sh we need more people like Sophia Vergara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we need we like we need more of that, you know. Make it more, make it more, more, more interesting, you know. Make it more fun to it. Make it yeah. more real. That's what I do. At least to me, I, I appreciate more whenever I will see a show or a film or a play that has some realism. Even though that you know that, yeah. but my point is that expand more, like, more authentic, right? Exactly, yeah. like more authentic. I mean, because if you if you're gonna, for example, if you're gonna force someone to speak in a specific way you know or to force them to speak in a you know in that you know you know my point here so if you try to force someone to do something that they're not comfortable to it no matter how amazing the thing is she's not gonna cut it so why would you do that instead of just giving like give the opportunity to you know to everyone to show what they got I yeah. think that's the whole beauty of it. Whenever you can get the chance to show what they got and you might get inspired or 
or maybe you will not get the part, but at least you got the opportunity to it instead of forcing you because with some of the actors, as I was mentioned, that they have uh, that they have an accent to it, they will have to be taking classes to work on that accent to it, which to me, yeah. you know what I mean? Like why? <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, um, Bob Korf's class is really good and highly recommended. You know, for standard American accents, I. I took a couple of classes with them, super expensive, but there is an online book, I think, that you can just listen to it. And yeah, like, I guess because of the, you know, we, you know, we can want whatever, but the reality is they do want an American accent. And my, um, because I, t- I just spoke with my agent the other week and um, I was like, so what is going on? You know, like uh, I can do it in my auditions, like, you know, to, at least to the best of my abilities. <laughs> but um, she was like, yeah, you know, you, she's like, your accent really, re- like really improved, but there's still a little bit that's it's not gone yet. So and that little bit limits limits me a lot, actually. So, yeah, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what's going on in this industry. I don't know. I feel like if if the next strike happens, it should be about this. I guess this is a, kind of a BS. Very <laughs> BS. Yeah. I mean, there's. A, I mean, we all know that there's this huge conversation that we need that needs to be spoken. You know that we we should be putting attention to it. You know, in everything basically, because as you mentioned, just because the accent. Are you kidding me now? So what's next? You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's just nonsense, and it's a shame, as I was saying, because you don't give the opportunity to new, you know, you know, to new upcoming talent, and. It's a shame that that something so cool and something so yeah inspiring as acting and so noble at the same time sometimes get affected by just some people who are like you know what let's just focus on the accents because mm-hmm. I mean maybe uh, well, I mean I would assume that maybe they will focus on the accents because there's some people who are you know who are yeah who are still racist about that. And whenever they hear someone who doesn't speak a perfectly 100% English, they're like, that's horrible. You know what I mean? When when yeah. the when the idea should be like, nobody chooses where to born. You know, nobody chooses nobody chooses a country where they can be where where, where they can be raised or things like that. Some people are born in different countries, some people have different opportunities than others. And sometimes if they manage to get the job done and to perform and to show you that, hey, I can do it too. And just to be pushed aside because you don't speak 100% or things like that, as I was saying before, it's at, at least to me as well, it's just a big nonsense thing. So Yeah. It, uh, also, you know, one of my dialect coaches said, that Americans, because he is American, he grew up in New York. Uh, he said that Americans associate an accent with like intellect, almost like if they if they hear an accent, like someone speaks with an accent, they're like, "Oh, you're a foreigner." So therefore, you know, you're you're less, or like you're not as smart as we are who speak in a in a in an American accent, which is so stupid you know (laughs) to just you know judge people um by that totally yeah totally because then you can say to those people like how many languages do you speak yeah that's i rest my case that's right badass badass (laughs) and you know what my last question Mm-hmm. So we can enjoy and relax after a, an incredible conversation that once we finish this interview, I'm going to tell you an idea that I just have that you're going to love it. But anyway, so here it is. The last question. What do you think that could be the best title for this episode? Ooh. 
I haven't thought about that. <laughs> to be honest. Take your time. <laughs> well, let's see. What do we um hmm. We've talked about the strike, the motivations, the going through hardship. <laughs> Um true. Hmm. Something maybe like kind of like keep it up maybe or something like that. Or um what do you think? Keep it up. <laughs> or we can call it badass vol vol two. Or what about don't mess with my accent? <laughs> uh yeah, that could be good too. Or or that could be the that that could be the title for 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 another one. What about what about keep it real? Yeah, keep it real. I like keep it real. There you go. We have a title then. Keep it real. I mean, at the end, what can I say? You know, you are pursuing it. What makes you happy? You are keep doing it. You are keep, you are keep rocking out there. I mean, that is inspirational enough, at least to me, to be like, you know what? She's doing it. You know, she's in another country, another culture, and she and she is showing up and she's doing the work. That's badass. So keep doing what you do. Keep shining out there. Keep rocking. And also want to thank those who stayed this whole episode. Now, on the description below, as I said at the beginning, you're going to find all of Sneshiana, all of social media. Let's follow her. Let's make her viral. And again, thank you so much for making this happen. Keep shining out there. Keep rocking. Don't ever stop being this incredible, of amazing, badass person you always are. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.